Hi, this is Dennis Dyack. I'm the president of Silicon Knights, and we're here with IGN Weekly to give you an in-depth preview of Two Human, and we hope you like what you see. into the pool. Concentrate on the surface. You will feel a small tingling as you do. Don't worry about it. It's just the handshaking protocols kicking in. Just relax and watch. Two Human is a game where you play the cybernetic god Balder, charged with the defense of mankind against an onslaught of machines trying to wipe out all of mankind. I think Two Human is a game that we've had a hard time in kind of our descriptions being able to kind of summarize and, and put into summation. Um, a lot of people are, are quick to kind of compare it to X or Y or Z or something like a God of War, but really the game is very, very different and very unique. Two Human is an epic action adventure game that has a ton of role playing game RPG elements. Essentially, Two Human has some elements in the gameplay that may look like God of War at first, but it's really not. It's heavily and deeply uh, seated in role playing. The RPG aspects of the game uh, run fairly deep and, and they're all very much along the lines of uh, skill tree based systems where you can pick a class and there'll be a skill tree associated with that class. There's a spider, there's skill trees associated with that. You can choose to go down human paths or cybernetic paths. And so we have four player co-op and it's very much has a lot of Diablo elements of hunting and gathering or things like World of Warcraft where you collect epic items, customize yourself cybernetically, choose different weapons, different armor sets. Right now we've got uh, 25 basic ones that are just completely the way that we would prefer them. But you can take those 25, we've got, I, I won't say how many extra are actually downloadable content, quite a number. And if you think about all the different variants that you can actually make from all those pieces, let alone the color variants, let alone all the, all the missing patterns and, and so on, uh, it's almost endless. I think that type of robust system really enhances replayability for a game and it's the thing that keeps you coming back to get to level 50 and the great thing is is when you go to the second and the third game you're just gonna be able to carry your character over to go straight away so there's no relooning, there's no suddenly you lost all your powers and now you have to start over. We want the player to continue and build upon where they left off for the entire trilogy. It's got a lot of flavors and a lot of components that action gamers will want. You can juggle up guys, smack them around the screen, do massive combos, and that kind of stuff evolves the game and rewards you, uh, but it's also got deep collecting systems where players will want to run around, explore, um, get the best loot, get the best items, trade with their friends, compare what they have. With the fusion of those two elements plus the content and direction that we usually take with our games, I think people are going to get a very, very different experience and uh, we feel pretty comfortable that no one's seen anything like Two Human yet. You saw how well Lord of the Rings went over. This is like Tolkien. This is based on you know, a lot of the old Norse mythology. At the same time, like the Lord of the Rings, this thing is epic. There's a reason why we're making it a trilogy. Huge, huge worlds. Norse mythology um, is, I would say, completely embedded and is inseparable from the storyline um, at every element that you can possibly think of. We've been thinking about this for a very, very long time. People who are really into that material they can get such a, a great visualization of some of the things that they've read and seen and experienced in such a unique medium. It's just unbelievable to be able to finally interact with something you've, you've looked into so much of your life. And on, on the other side, if you're really not that familiar with the Norse mythologies, you're just looking at really well-developed characters, phenomenal settings, a vast, vast universe that's exciting to explore. And the great thing is Norse mythology is so rich you have ice forests, you have all these different places that you can go, it just grounds everything in such a way that, um, you know, we can have a real diversity, but also a very, very, very consistent feel for the whole game. I think one of the most innovative things about the control scheme is that most of the melee combat takes place purely on the right analog stick. 
And what that allows us to do is it allows us to take some of the, the depth and the distancing issues with three-dimensional combat and make it a lot more accessible. In the same vein, we focused really, really hard on making sure that the game of play also has a ton of depth. There's different techniques, different motions, different situations and different combinations between the right analog stick and the left analog stick that give you different actions and different moves. So the player's always got to think, and they're not just thinking about what they can do, they're thinking about what situation they're in, and they're given a repertoire to be able to compensate for that. We've heard so many times that people don't buy into the right analog stick, um, and it's only because there hasn't been a good game, a really strong game yet, that's utilized it. We feel really confident we're going to be there. I like to say we're, we're fusing some Eastern philosophy, where we have a lot of Twitch gameplay from a lot of the Japanese games, uh, where games like, say, Devil May Cry, where we really are balancing that gameplay, and those skills and different combinations and how to jump and how to air hover are doing different kind of combos you can get during the skill trees as you level up. But the other one is statistically balancing other things, which is the traditional North American way, like the guys at Bioware typically do with their games. I think that's really driving home what we're trying to deliver here uh, from a standpoint of uh, trying to get a true convergence on a lot of philosophies that we've been thinking about uh, for two humans since we started thinking about it so long ago. Huh. It's a long way down. I can't even see the bottom. You will if you don't shut up, Private. Nothing but ghosts here, First Wolf. So the camera system in Two Human is quite unique. When you're navigating around the environment, the camera is very focused on giving you some of the best views and the best presentation of that. You walk by a statue and it's something of importance, the camera subtly nudges you in that direction and says, take a look at me. One of the things about the interactive camera system can, combined with the control scheme is we wanted to talk the language of cinema for the gamer. So you can see as we go around this corner, there's no buttons to hit, the camera just intuitively picks things for the player to look at if he desires so. And so the intelligent camera system is almost like your personal director. It really isn't intrusive to the gameplay. It lets the player keep on doing what they want to do. And, and primarily, it takes the focus off of constantly having to move and adjust the camera, which is something that, even as an experienced gamer, I have a hard time fighting and moving the camera myself. What makes the adaptive camera so strong is that it knows the situation you're in. So the way it presents something to you while you're navigating may not be the same way it presents something to you in combat. So when you do close in melee, the camera zooms in, we do a depth of field, and so you're only focusing on the things that are close to you. It's those kind of things, that language of film that people have been trained through for Hollywood, those are the things that I think are really going to make the game stand out. So we really hope that the epicness of Two Human comes through and everything that we can do and we hope people are excited to get their hands on it, jump into the action, jump into the RPG, develop their character, take it online, play it with a ton of their friends, and experience the epic cinematic game that is to you. Uh, we saw how, how exciting and how well Lord of the Rings did as a movie. Well, let's take it interactive. Let's play with your friends and put you in something that's you know, equally expansive except we can keep adding to it. We feel good about the direction that we're taking and we do feel that we're going to offer a very, very solid experience, entertainment experience for people where anyone will be able to pick it up and play and enjoy what we've created.